Hey guys, my name is Nathan and welcome to Hale. So life is pretty crazy right now, what with the coronavirus and everything. Basically my college has transitioned into online courses. We have school canceled until Tuesday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. But after that, the rest of the semester, about the last three weeks or so will be offered only online. And so I'm not quite sure yet if that makes things more complicated for me or easier for me. We're just going to see. We're going to play it by ear. But anyways, today we will be talking about movie sequels that are better than the first movie. This isn't to say that I don't like the first movie or the second movie of this series. In some cases with these movies, I like all the movies in the series, but one of the sequels is my favorite. Now, this list will contain movies that aren't only the second movie in the series, but it will also contain movies that are the third entry of the series or even the sixth entry of the series. And also before we get started, I just wanted to throw out there that this is all my opinion. I am positive that there will be some disagreements with my choices, but this is just what I feel and what I think about these particular sequels. But if you think about it, it's hard to rank these movies because each of them are sequels to an original movie of their own designated series and so comparing for an example star wars the empire strikes back to the dark knight those are two completely different movies yet they both stand as powerful sequels to their original movies and so it's hard to compare those two movies and so i won't be ranking them rather i will just be sharing 15 movie sequels that i like more than the original movie of the series starting off our list is avengers infinity war now really i could have included avengers infinity war or endgame but i'm going to choose infinity war over endgame because i feel like it was such a big step for the marvel cinematic universe they were able to accomplish such a large twist and not only that, but they left us hanging, the audience hanging, for a year before we got any answers. And with that, they accomplished something great. The Bourne Ultimatum is the third movie in the Bourne series. And it is also my favorite Jason Bourne film out of all the ones that have been made. The first one is a great movie. We get the introduction to Jason Bourne, and there are a lot of questions presented. But you don't really get any answers. And while the first and second one also have great action scenes, the third one also adds in its own signature action scenes that I love. Plus, you get answers to who Jason Bourne is, which is great. It was a tough choice choosing Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban as my favorite sequel. The reason I chose this one over, say, Order of the Phoenix or Deathly Hallows Part 1 or Part 2 was because Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban was really the first movie in the series where the series took a turn. Sorcerer's Stone and Chamber of Secrets stories were much more simple and much more lighthearted, whereas Prisoner of Azkaban presented a much darker tone to the Harry Potter series, one that was much needed, I would say, because it paved the way for future Harry Potter films. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade is a movie that, yes, I like it more than Raiders of the Lost Ark. I know, it's crazy. For me, Raiders of the Lost Ark is a good movie, but Marion just kind of annoys me. With The Last Crusade, I love the team up of Indiana Jones and his father. I also love how Marcus plays a role in the movie. And the movie is just fun. It might be my favorite action film of all time. It gives me things that I simply just like more than the first one. Spider-Man 2. Now this is hard because to me, the first two Spider-Man movies are a tie. I love both movies for very different reasons. But the reason I'm going to include Spider-Man 2 is because I feel like universally it is considered a better movie. I'm not quite sure though if I like it more than the first one, but let me explain my reasoning. This movie explores what it really is to be a hero. We follow Peter Parker in this new movie and we find that he really can only be a hero if he wants to be a hero. He can't just be a superhero just because he has these powers. It literally goes with the saying, with great power comes great responsibility because now he has to choose whether or not he wants to be a hero. That is an amazing plot for a superhero film, and that is why I think that it is a better movie than the first movie, whether or not I like it more than the first movie. Does that make sense? In my mind, it makes sense. It's kind of like the difference between a favorite movie and the best movie. There's a difference, you know? I like both movies regardless. Lord of the Rings The Return of the King is an amazing movie and my favorite of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This is another one of those examples where I love the first one, I love the second one, but the third one is the strongest in my opinion. You get a lot of great action scenes, you get so many great emotional moments, especially when Sam carries Frodo up the hill. It is just a powerful movie and it is the definition of an epic. There are so many great long scenes in this movie and I love it. The Hunger Games Catching Fire. This movie was like miles better than the first one and I like the first one too. But as a, someone who read the books of Hunger Games before watching the movies, I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw the Hunger Games in theaters in 2012, I was disappointed. There were 
key things they left out of the movie that I wasn't really happy about. But Catching Fire was a much better adaptation of the book. And plus, the story was just so interesting to follow because the stakes were much higher than they were in the first movie. Mission Impossible Fallout, uh, here's that sixth movie that, yeah, it's better than the first, honestly, it just is. It is one of the best action movies that we saw last decade and really that I think I've ever seen in my life. It was a movie that I was on the edge of my seat and I just enjoyed every second of it. It's impressive when a movie can both be critically acclaimed and a fun popcorn film. And Mission Impossible Fallout, it accomplished all of that and more. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Now this isn't comparing it to Star Wars from 1977, because if you think about it, Revenge of the Sith is part of the prequel trilogy. Now, I only wanted to include one Star Wars movie on this list. I think it's a given that we all love Empire Strikes Back. So I decided to include Revenge of the Sith is better than Phantom Menace. For me, Revenge of the Sith is actually one of my favorite Star Wars films. Yes, there are countless memes out there about this movie, but I love the acting. I love Hayden Christensen's acting. It gets a lot of hate, but I think he does an amazing job in this movie. And plus, you just watch the fall of a Jedi, and it is so heartbreaking to, to watch that on screen. And the final scene between Obi-Wan and Anakin is amazing, and I love it, and it's so emotional too. It's great. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes. Now really, I could have chosen Dawn or War for the Planet of the Apes. But I chose Dawn of the Planet of the Apes because it is such a big leap from Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Dawn of the Planet of the Apes provided us with improved visual effects, uh, another amazing score, um, a great story, great monkey ape fighting scenes. And the reason I didn't choose War for the Planet of the Apes is because War was kind of on the same level as Dawn, where both those movies are just amazing in my mind. Whereas the gap of improvement between Rise and Dawn of the Planet of the Apes is a much bigger one than the gap of improvement is between Dawn and War for the Planet of the Apes. Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Uh, yeah, I mean, come on, what can I say? This is not only much better than the first Captain America, but it is also one of the best MCU movies in general. There is a ton of character development in this film, especially with Black Widow, which I really like, but also I love in movies, and I've mentioned this on my channel before, but I love it when a character is on the run or they're in hiding. It's one of the reasons I love Deathly Hallows Part 1. Uh, if you want to see more reasons why I love Deathly Hallows Part 1, click on this video up here. And plus, Winter Soldier just gave us so many great action scenes. It again accomplished what Mission Impossible Fallout accomplished, where it's a critically acclaimed film, but it's also a great popcorn film. The Dark Knight. Come on, of course it was going to make the list. But I wanted to say that it is impressive how good The Dark Knight is, because Batman Begins is probably the best superhero origin film I have ever seen, which is saying a lot because I love the first Raimi Spider-Man film. And the fact that The Dark Knight was better than it, that's very impressive. Now, we of, of course, we can thank Heath Ledger for that. His performance is amazing, but I'm not adding anything new to the table as far as my thoughts on The Dark Knight. It's just a great sequel. Thor Ragnarok was a movie that was better than the first movie and the second movie. I don't know if there's much to say. I think it's mostly because the first two movies aren't anything too amazing, whereas Thor Ragnarok was just, it was very colorful, it was funny, it was entertaining to watch, and it was what the first two movies should have been. Shrek 2. Yes, I like Shrek 2 more than the first Shrek. This is mostly because I absolutely love the story in this one. You already know the characters and you're introduced to new characters such as Puss in Boots and Fiona's parents and the fairy godmother and Prince Charming. There are so many great new characters introduced into this story and I love all of them. Plus the fairy godmother is an amazing villain and I'm not gonna lie, the scene where she sings I Need a Hero is one of my favorite scenes of any animated movie ever. I love it in a movie where music can play a role in building tension. And oddly enough, her singing that cheesy song from the 70s or 80s, that builds tension for me, man. Good on you, Shrek 2. There are plenty of other great sequels I could have included on this list. And so to limit it to only 15 was a hard choice. And so if you see a sequel that I didn't include on this list that you would like to be mentioned, then comment below on what it is, because I guarantee you, I thought about whether or not to include it on this list. But the final movie I want to add on this list is Paddington 2. Paddington 2 was a movie that shouldn't be as good as it is. It's just so joyful and so simple. It's so easy and so pleasant. There are some adjectives for you to butter your biscuit with. The first Paddington movie is a good movie too, but I just loved the whole 
theme of Paddington being in jail in this one and making friends with the prisoners. That's hilarious to me. There are so many unrealistic things in this movie, but I don't even care because I just love what I'm watching. So it doesn't matter. And yeah, it was better than the first one. Like I said before, guys, leave your comments below on sequels that you liked more than the first movies. And let me know if you have any questions for me. I guarantee you there are movies that I left out. And so if you're wondering about them, just let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and check out my other videos and leave a like, comment, subscribe, and be safe. Wash your hands and just be wise. So yeah, thanks guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.